Hello and welcome to Dr. Bren's channel. My name is Bindi Belange and today I'm very excited to be having a conversation with Dr. Bren about projection in romantic relationships. Hi, Dr. Bren. Hi, Bindi. Where does projection even begin? Where does it originate? Yeah, so every experience that we have in life relationally, but all experiences, but let's just talk about relationally, gets filed, all of it gets filed into one's mind. And we split the mind up between conscious and unconscious, just to make it simple. And the way that the mind will file things is basically, this is me, and this is not me. So if I'm in relationship with, say, my mother or my father, and I'm looking at whatever they're doing, and we're having this conversation, and I'm and we're having this relationship, I'm basically taking the part that is me, and I'm identifying it. This is me, and the part that's them, and particularly the stuff that I don't like about them, and this is not me. But so literally the other person is being filed in your own unconscious. It's not just your own subjectivity that's being filed in your unconscious or in your psyche. Everything in your experiential world is being put into your mind. And so the way the shadow is created is by this simple work of saying me, not me, me, not me. Got it. And then when we enter into romantic relationships, how does projection start to, like what triggers a projection to kind of start to show up in the, in the context of a romantic relationship? So because it's a relationship, the part of that's already been filed inside of a person, all of the relationships, that's what you're going to see outside of you, right? So is, let me give you an example. So the mind is constantly looking at the world and basically saying, I know that, I don't know that, I know this, I know. So when it's basically saying, I know something, it's saying, that's a car, that's a mailbox, that's a tree, et cetera, et cetera. And the, when we're in relationship, the same thing happens. So we'll see somebody you know, frown, or we'll see somebody um, say something, or we'll hear a tone of voice or whatever, and that will trigger something already in our mind that says, I know what that is. And mm -hmm. so there comes the projection, right? So it's just, it's similar. It's a little bit different because it's not a tree. We're talking about something um, more metaphysical, right? Because of the things that I was talking about, but it's the same process in the mind because the mind, the ego mind particularly is basically saying, um, I know the world. Mm. I know the world. And so it's taking all of that stuff and that's how it's getting filed. Does that make sense? Um, yes, I think so. Maybe an example would help since you, you work with so many clients, uh, and many of them are in romantic relationships. Um, can you share some examples of what projections might look like in a, a typical couple? So let's say that somebody had a pretty difficult father. And that father was maybe could be described as tyrannical and maybe yelled, uh, maybe, um, you know, had a strong, loud voice. And let's say that that a person is in relationship with a person that also has a loud voice, but isn't tyrannical. What's going to happen is that person is going to project the entire quality and characteristic of the father, all mm. of those qualities, based on maybe that one hook that this person has. And so then it's just like, oh, now I'm, this is my father. And then they'll start reacting and relating to that person and not see that person anymore. Wow. So then the projection is super unconscious right because they're not seeing that this loud voice which is the one thing that is in common between her you know the father and the partner is the thing that's now created this whole this persona that's been attached to the partner yeah that's how it works and it's and it's like this and you could see how just like the sound of a person's voice or pitch of a person's voice or 
a frown or a whatever. A anything could be a trigger of an entire complex that is being projected, particularly relational complexes that are related to our parents, because everybody usually ends up in a relationship with their parents, mother, father, or, or siblings or whatever, because that's what's in their unconscious. So their unconscious is attracting a person that's going to match that. Why? Because the unconscious wants to be conscious. The shadow wants to seek the light. It wants to help the ego grow into the greater self. And so that's why these happen. So you attract somebody that's going to be uh, a match for your unconscious so that this work can happen. Oh my gosh, that is so eye-opening. And then when you think about people who are in relationships or, or pro let's say you have someone that's dating and they seem to keep attracting the same type of person, even though their conscious intention is, you know, I'm done with people who don't treat me well. I'm done with people who are not ambitious, but they keep attracting the same type of guy or girl um, and, and wondering like, why, why do I keep bringing that type of person into my life? It's because their unconscious is, is seeking to be seen, acknowledged, integrated, made, and, and, and so that the persona can be whole again. Is that right? Am I summarizing? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say persona. I would say the, the entire self to be whole. Persona is one piece of the, the um, archetypes of Jung's psychology. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be the persona, but, but yes, it's so that, that that what is in the unconscious is seeking to be seen and to be integrated into the subject's psyche. What ends up happening is people get into relationships, they do this projection, they think that person over there is really real according to their projection, according to their unconscious, their shadow, and then all of the fights happen there. All of the disagreements happen there. And then they then, then they want, you know, they come into therapy or whatever and they want me to fix that person. And it's like, well, it's your projection and it's your wholeness that has to be brought into integration. And that's the hard work because lots of people, uh, let me say it differently. The hard work is in stepping out of your ego and allowing for, your shadow to come in and make your ego bigger like that's part of the work right because the um we get quite identified with our me's and we get quite indignant about our not me's hmm. so if somebody doesn't have a gifted therapist that can help them recognize when they're in a projection what are some of the indicators that can help them recognize it themselves? Because it, the projection is coming from the unconscious. So it, it must take some practice, right? To know, oh, wait, that's, I'm projecting right now. How, do, what are some of those indicators? Yeah, I think sometimes the indicators are when whatever the emotion that's around the projection is out of sync for whatever's going on, like there's an exaggeration. I think that's a good indicator. I think in, when you're in um, very clear black and white thinking, always or never, that's a good indicator. When you're feeling like you're right no matter what, that's another good indicator. Like you could look at all the ways in which the left brain files reality in its virtual reality kind of way. And that would all be indicators that you're in a projection or the shadow is projecting. Because if you're in the left brain and that's the black and white logical sort of thinking and I'm right and you're wrong and all that kind of stuff, then you're not in the right brain, which is the only place you can be to be in relationship with someone else. You have to be in the present moment. You have to be in the experience of them as something other than you. But even, even when you recognize it, it can be really hard to take back the projection. So why is that? Why is it so hard for us to, you know, even when we're able to recognize that we're projecting, why is it hard for us to kind of pull that back in and say, oh, okay, wait, I'm projecting. That's not really what's happening here. Like, that's not about them. It's about me. Like, what's, what makes that so difficult for us? 
I think it's because we're used to fighting and, and, and we're used to having a strong sense of ourselves. And when we're basically, basically saying, wait a minute, what I'm, you're saying that what I think is real is not real. It's an illusion. You know, it takes a very strong ego to be able to tolerate that level of, of delusion because it is, it is a delusion, but it's the only way we can get through the delusion. We have to, we have to do it. And then we have to go, oh, there we go. Another illusion. Let me bring that back. And that's hard. We'd rather, I mean, you would talk about how hard it was for him to get his patients to understand that they were in a projection. It's difficult. It's difficult because it's basically saying that you don't know. You thought you didn't know, and you're walking around like you're this person and the world is this. And then in a few minutes later, you're like, wait a minute, I'm not that person. And the world isn't what I was just projecting. That's really hard. I mean, and, and, and then if you go down the path of that over and over and over again, you begin to realize, wait a minute, what, what is true and who am I? Right. Which is kind of the project. I guess that's what makes you know, projection wreaks so much havoc in romantic relationships, right? Because it, it, it creates such a challenge for the ego in terms of recognizing what's true and not true. Totally. I mean, I think that's, that's it. Then who do you trust? Right. And then we have this whole phenomenon of like gaslighting and all this kind of stuff that's in the it's in the ethers now with with relationships. And so there's even more of a of a like, I'm going to believe what I think, not what he or she thinks, you know, and so but quite frankly, that will always keep you in that projection. And if you don't take back your projections, you're going to be in repetition hell. You're just going to keep repeating and repeating and repeating because the unconscious is going, oh my God, will she get it this time? Will she get it this time? <laughs> right. And so there, there's a, there's a huge amount of humility and, uh, and um, strong self-awareness that is needed in order to be able to do this work of taking back projections. And in the context of romantic relationships, what, function does the projection serve like and from a let's look at it from a spiritual growth perspective like what is the purpose of having these projections um constantly playing themselves out right we talked a little bit about wholeness can you expand on that a little bit and and talk more about it in terms of our our ultimate you know growth yeah i i, I can so Let's just let's just say that the that ego is um, a mirror image of of the self, the self archetype, to use a Jungian term, which would be kind of uh, equivalent to source or universal consciousness or unity mind or any of those got those ideas. And so the whole project of self-realization is to grow the ego into the self to self-realize, to become divine, to realize I am. That's the spiritual project. That's the union individuation project. So if my little self is so tiny um, and all this other stuff is in the shadow, all, the, all of wholeness that's been, that's been um, edited out of my experience, then the job is to grow through integration of the shadow. And the mm -hmm. only way I can do that is to, by taking my unconscious with, and which is happening unconsciously and projecting that out onto the world and then bring it back in. And then my ego gets bigger and bigger. And at some point it self realizes into the self archetype. So what are the steps then to bring it back in? What are the steps to grow into that? you know, whole self, like when you said to bring it in, to, to take back the projection, to integrate it, what, it, what do those steps look like? The hardest step is to disidentify, right? Because we are so identified with that 
that's being projected as really real. So the first thing is to kind of separate from, oh, there's me and there's my projection. That's not really real, right? And then after that, we kind of make a decision about whether it's good or bad or whatever. We kind of go through this morality thing, which is the hard part because it's harder to take back negative projections like, oh, that's my anger. Oh, that's my rage. Oh, that's my narcissism or whatever, right? That's harder to do. So we go through that stage as well. And then we go through a stage where we're, we're kind of disillusioned because we're like, what, really? It, it's just an illusion. And then the final piece is just the integration that I was talking about. We integrate it as part of ourselves. Stay tuned, right? Subscribe to the channel because we'll be putting out some additional videos on this topic that you can uh, learn alongside us um, when you are ready. Thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Thank you.